Good afternoon, folks. Ted Rawson here in the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii with our two guests, Kainoa Jimenez. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay. Michael Morris. Yes. Two folks who've been on the show two weeks ago and uh, are back two weeks later, which is really interesting and here on Think Tech's Where the Drone Leads, where the drone leads to a lot of repeat business at the show here because we only spoke half an hour last time. We had barely enough time to get past introducing the fact that you are now in business. Right. in a drone business. Now we got to talk about how that drone business actually moves forward because it isn't like something that's out there today that you're replacing. It's something completely new. So thanks for coming on board again, guys. And I no suspect problem. if you're here this, you were here two weeks ago, you can come here again in two more weeks. And we're going to have to watch how this whole <laughs> thing grows because it'll be really instructive for the studio here to understand and for people watching and then for me personally and for you. We could turn this into a learning exercise in, term, in terms of how a drone business actually grows yes. as Colea LLC, yes. Colea LLC, which Colea is you two, plus your equipment and your network, uh, actually starts moving forward in the commercial drone business. When we sat here two weeks ago, we had all just passed our 107, FAA 107 yes. uh, pilot license tests, and we were proud of the fact that we able to actually manipulate the FAA website well enough to print the thing out, which was major accomplishment. Yeah. Okay. But once again, thanks for coming on board. And uh, as, as I was saying, uh, uh, the issue of moving forward in a business like you've created or intend to create uh, has no precedent. So how do you start out? You got an engineering side, you got the business side. How do you put that together and start out and advertise yourselves and convince customers that you are real and, and you're differentiated from others who aren't? How does that work? So. That's a really good question, Ted. I mean, when we first started as entrepreneurs, I mean, we we had to understand the whole business structure. And going into, now we establishing ourselves, we, we we're setting up our, our website. We are Colea Gold we LLC. Are, we are Colea right. Gold LLC. Okay. <laughs> yes, we are. And <clears throat> for, for us, it was understanding um, protocol when it came to now that we have our license, right, our, our Part 107, we have to understand state laws. And in the state of Hawaii, when it comes to obtaining permits for film, uh, I mean, we had to understand how important it is to obtain these film permits to actually do work. And our niche was uh, finding a way to, you know, have all these open markets, what was our niche? And for us, it was education, to be honest, reaching out to the community. You know, our mentors are from Drone Services Hawaii with George Purdy, I mean. Yeah, let's Mike do a shout Elliott. out to George and Mike Elliott and the yeah, guys down there. Probably. Okay, thanks George, thanks Mike. <laughs> these, these guys um, really showed us the understanding of starting a company and, and now we're in the stages of obtaining um, insurance and you need to be covered with liability and then also you know even on our on our instagram we try to share with the community each step that we take from starting basically from a basement all the way to where we're going to land our first contract potentially with schools that we're looking into um well, one in particular um is the hawaiian emergent schools hawaiian charter schools we're trying to reach out to these kids you know, with the age limit, 16, and see, hey, we'll show you what we did, how we did it, and if you pass your tests, you know, better for you to send this whole dr uh, drone pipeline operators, you know? You know, as you say that, it just makes me some think of something. We talked last time about the fact that Kainoa's on board, who's an engineer yes. as part of your team. Most organizations wouldn't have the benefit of an engineer on board. They have the business people and the operators and such, but as you speak about going into schools, you can also open up the door to STEM and engineering discussions and education for kids who are interested in that aspect of the game as well. So when you go into a school, you have two potential vectors here that you could, uh, you could work on. Yes. Have you thought about that? How would, you, how, how would you present engineering to an elementary or a high school group? That is a really interesting challenge. Engineering is complex and it's, you have to have been there to you know, beaten on the head enough times to get through it. <laughs> and, and but but how how do you explain that to kids? Do you think? Well, using drones, of course, as your frame of reference. Well, as a student, so currently I'm a student at LCC, and I've firsthand experience of the STEM program. And 
the folks at LCC and the folks that work with STEM and LCC, they do a wonderful job in incorporating how important it is for technology to be, you know, explained in, in a sense for, I guess, dummies. Not excuse my language, but, you know. <laughs> Engineering those, for dummies? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So there's, there's different ways, and the best way that I've come across it is hands-on. For example, with these drones, these drones opportunity. This drone, I never knew nothing until my, my business partner, my Motas, brought a drone in front of my eyes, and I was like, what is that? And he was like, it's a drone, it's a new thing. It's this company, DJI, just established it. Do you, do you have any um, experience with this? And I was like, well, I took a class in robotics that, where I used to go at or Orange Coast College in California. And so I was like, hey, let me take a look at it. Let's open it up. So we opened so it that, up. There you go, there's the engineer. First thing you don't want to do is fly it and make money at it. You want to take it <laughs> apart and see what, how it makes oh, it tick. Oh, of course. Yeah, okay. We're, we're more excited about how things work instead of profiting. Okay, it. that's an important step right there. How yes. things work, yes. how they should work, Yes. what the consequences of failure are, how failure can be minim minimized, and this sort of thing. If you can find a way to get that kind of thinking in using drones in the young kids, that would be so important. Yes. You know, from my perspective, uh, what we have today in the world of commercial drones uh, will be replaced over very shortly by systems that have much more robust communication mm -hmm. and uh, much, uh, much better, um, uh, much simpler flight aspects. So they can, the mission can be managed, not the flight. I just saw something today, uh, Parrot or somebody put out a much easier to fly fixed wing aircraft now, similar to the, uh, to the rotorcraft that are so yes. easy to fly. So getting kids to think critically and think what the next step should be and who, they're, who they turn to to get help understanding that. There's a lot of math modeling that's required yes. in here. And that's, yeah. this is a great application for math. Math is so hard to grab your arms around when you're a kid, you know, but you could add math to this whole thing. That would be fascinating if you could pull that off. I was thinking about a one way we could incorporate how to describe what an engineer does is, in my understanding is, an engineer is a problem solver. We tackle problems that no one else wants to take because it's so complicated and they don't have the mental patience to, I guess, tackle it. And so one way that I could get back to your question about how to, I guess, explain engineering to kids would be the use of Legos. I could ask them to create me, maybe what, what is your envision of a plane or something? And they can go from there and use their hands to create their vision in their head, what they think an airplane is. And from there, they will obviously encounter problems. And that's the first thing I'm gonna tell them. That is exactly what engineers do. We encounter problems, but we don't stop and let that block us. We step, take a step back, look at what we're doing, and then assess the problems in different different scenarios and come up with different strategies. And that's exactly what, I guess, hands-on experience with Legos with kids. They're gonna use their minds, and what else are they gonna do? They're just gonna start clicking, and next thing you know, they're gonna start explaining to me what the answer <laughs> that's is. That's critical thinking right there. You're exactly. taking them through the path Absolutely. and finding a solution, and we're diverting from the conversation in hand here, but this is a really important part because there's a, there's a, a big issue to train the workforce. The future of drones, whether they're manufacturing, operations, the software, the analytics, whatever it is, we don't have the workforce. Mm -hmm. And we have to train the workforce. We have to get the kids interested and then provide a framework that gets them trained. And FAA has even provided an educational interpretation that allows uh, properly accredited educational programs to use uh, drones or UAS without the students having any certification at all. Mm -hmm. The teacher may have to have one or may not, depending on the consequences, but there's this big unfulfilled need of, uh, of getting education going to generate the workforce, if nothing else. But also, it's, uh, it's a good service to the kids to teach them exactly what you're trying to, what you're trying to get into them. That's yes. the issue of critical thinking. Yeah, so, we, we like to encourage that. Um, Kainoa's passion for engineering and research and development that all includes into this, this niche that we're sh striving for as schools out there in Hawaii. If you are, you know, interested, we call out to all the principals here in Hawaii, and if you are interested in, you know, a STEM program or a program involving drones, some things that we would like to incorporate, you know, with Kainoa's knowledge out in STEM, you know, I introducing them into drones. And, and for us, that's what we do at Kolea Gold. We, we follow our passion. My passion is media. My passion, or, or my background was more Olelo Hawaii and Hawaiian culture and 
to bridge this gap with Kainoa's passion for research and development, what we're doing is we're creating this, as long as we follow our passion into creating something for our future, that it's inevitable. Can you use that as some of the theme material for your booth and your table at the state capitol on the 4th of October when we have the Aerospace Summit yes. and the UAS conversation? I think you just outlined the issue of passion. That doesn't show up in aerospace much. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a whole different dimension on the game, and this would be excellent to paint that picture. So we'll, we'll see if that... Uh, we'll have to look at this video when we get home tonight and, and write down what you said. <laughs> and turn that into some charts. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's up here. I mean, because of our passion for what we're doing, even in the... Um, what we're doing is on our display board for um, next week in October for the Senate, we want to we wanna make sure what we display, we follow all regulations from both the, the FAA and the state. In other words, in the air and on the land. And we found a way, to be honest, we, we found a way to demonstrate something that will benefit the state of Hawaii or the community from all, all aspects because um, as, especially when it comes to our, our, our kids, our kids is, they're the ones who's gonna really come up with the solution. I mean, uh, George, George mentioned, it's like we're catching up. We're catching up to this technology, but if we encourage the, the, the community with parents and out there and showing them how, how to become a, a legitimate, you know, aircraft pilot and understanding the rules and the legalities of business, that's what we're striving for. That's our passion. That's pretty cool. If you can find a way to illustrate that, articulate that, and, and communicate that to everybody you see, and that's yes. kind of how we started the conversation here. That message has to be transmitted to your potential customers as well. So they see that you're the whole operation. You have the ability to conceive the mission, run the mission, do the analysis, fix anything, and perhaps even come up with sensors or mission and software that doesn't exist today and, yes. uh, and solve the problem in that whole way. So as you, as you go back to that, again, we spoke here, we all have our 107 licenses now, and, and yes. I suspect a lot of people think that once you have that license, that's all, all it takes, you're, you're good to go. When in <laughs> fact, that is, <laughs> you're laughing, that is absolutely not the case, right? 107 right. is stric strictly the FAA's acknowledgement and recognition that you have a certain amount of knowledge associated with using drones or UAS in the national airspace, yes. and they will trust you to go use them under certain and highly restricted ways or apply for waivers to take the step beyond but it just gives you the the federal approval it doesn't have anything to do with state, state approval yes. the landowner's approval dealing with uh, uh, civil rights or protection of uh, privacy and, and this sort of thing and mm -hmm. it doesn't say anything about potential uh, managing a liability for yourself uh, there's a lot of things that are that are will go way beyond the 107 certainly 107 is where it starts but once you get past that point now there's a whole field of other things you have to deal with, and that's where you guys are right now. Yes, I mean, as as Kolea Gold, as a small company, we have we have found a way for each and every 107 holder or company going up to the film office. Now we we recommend, in fact, it's required that you go to uh, the state film office website and you obtain the permit, the film permit. Now, certain areas do not require a film permit. However, for drone operations, it's very I'll complex. tell you what, this, the, the fact that this is complex, let's spend the next, se next segment of this show talking just about that. Let's, let's take a break here and come back to that. That's a really important part, and I wouldn't yes, want to lose is. the significance of it. So we'll come back to that right after our break. Hi, I'm Tyler Sabota, and I was actually a guest host on Carl Campagna's Think Tech Hawaii show, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. And I think you should tune in every Wednesday to find, find out more about what it is. That's all. Take care. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, 
but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Ted Rawson and our guest here on Think Tech Hawaii is where the drone leads. Uh, Friday afternoon. If you're setting your clock by our show, not a good idea today. We're running a little bit late on the start, so if your clock shows 10 minutes ahead of where you thought you'd be at the end of our first segment, that's about right. So anyway, uh, Ted Rawlson here, uh, Kainoa Jimenez, nice to meet you. and Michael Modis once yes. again, uh, becoming frequent flyers on this show. Yes. And now that you have your 107 license, you can frequent fly in a lot of places. Or maybe you can't, depending on the permits that, uh, that you have to get <laughs> and, and such. So we were talking just before a break about the fact that 107 license gives you a federal recognition and that's all it gives you. Uh, and it doesn't really, you have to solve the other solve problems. You have to solve the other problems along the way, the other permits and the other issues that need to be respected. And those aren't well written down. They're not well, uh, there's no book you can turn to for the state of Hawaii that says here's how you can operate these things. We should make one based on your experience, uh, a, a best practices in, in the real life of small drones would be a super product for you to offer to the, to the state. So if, let's think Absolutely. about that. You men, we mentioned the film office as a, as a, a, a common place where permits are going to be needed. Aloha, everyone. I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii. Or video or but other entertainment related things. So let's think about that for a minute. The film office. What do you, what's the function of the film office in regard to drone operations? What do you think that is? Well, after visiting the film office um, next to the state capitol, we, I got to, I had a brief conversation with the film commissioner, Donnie Dawson, and she had all the information possible that, especially for drone operations, um, approving permits is so crucial for them because not only are we in air, the FAA, dealing with the FAA, but also we're dealing with land uh, jurisdiction, and it could vary from DLNR for state parks, beaches, and for parking lots. I mean, it could it could vary. No, not including um, private property. That's that's a separate. In fact, that's something that uh, could be a benefit for all pilots. As long as you're in a good airspace, private properties is more suitable for our approach on this but With private property doesn't require the is a, is a single approval by the landowner by the rather landowner. than multiple approvals by various other jurisdictions and yes. all all 107 pilots all understand what they need when going on private property and so that is the consent forms right and so the the best thing about it was um speaking with also the the acting chief at dlnr for for enforcement now. <laughs> these these guys, you know, they're the ones who's gonna come out and if they hear any complaints or any uh, situation where a operator, commercial or non-commercial, is in the state property, you still need a permit. Uh, that's very important that we share that, is that in the state film permit, if you're on the state, even beaches, you need a film permit. That's very important for commercial or non-commercial. So let's just repeat that one more time. If you're doing work in the state of Hawaii and recording imagery for the Nintendo video or film production, you need a film permit on all but private property. All but Maybe private. even private property? Um, it, it varies. They, 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 they had some, uh, depending on what property. But as far as, yes, state beaches, um, anywhere in the area, especially for focusing on drones, it's even more of a higher risk of you dealing with fines that the DLNR, the Department of Land and Resources can So enforce. if I can understand that, we have the state film office, which will issue a permit after everything has been properly set in place. But the land you're using may be DNLR's land. Yes. So w will there be a requirement for a DNLR permit as well as the film office permit, or does one cover both? That's a good question. The permit, depending That's an engineering on problem. we got to solve that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Already solved. <laughs> My CEO can provide the solution. The, the overall is the liability. They want to make sure that if you're operating in this area, mm. it has to be covered. And 
obtaining insurance that's a whole nother can of worms to open up i mean we would need another half an hour to talk about <laughs> oh insurance. you're coming back in two more weeks we'll talk about that oh, and <laughs> yeah. we'll bring some yeah. students and we can demonstrate do their legals but um over i mean overall what's important is that Coleo gold we, we like to reach out to the community and let them know if you decide to operate in a state park or in the beaches give us a call you know check out our website try to contact us we have all the information needed if um, we are we are being affiliated with DLNR we're getting involved with them and we're letting them know in the drone community we're, we're ready to apply and um, see eye to eye you know work together and what they encourage is for legitimate operators like ourselves to go out to the community and let them know hey we're trying to reach out to you we're trying to make sure that you have insurance that you have your film permit if not we have the directions for you you know we'll, we'll point you in the right direction and overall it's a win that's like our, our our passion for me is film that's my passion i will show you the way to get a film permit and for Kainoa, if you want to build a drone, he will show you how to build a drone from the from the beginning to Legos to all the way to operating an aircraft. So, so with this experience, you could lead the way in uh, best practices of uh, dealing with uh, the permits required in various circumstances in Hawaii. And so the, that that best practices could be shared with a drone professional organization or uh, in, in some way made such that the, it would make the deal on our job and the film office job a lot easier if yes. people could come and say, look, I'm already part of this best practices group and uh, here's my credentials in that domain. It would standardize and make easy their job. Right. And uh, that would be an, a, a really mature step to take here in a very immature business. Yes. And you know, that's not a lot different from engineering or surveying or these things. If you're going to do a survey, you're going to have to have the licensing and such for being a surveyor. If you're doing engineering work in a hotel, you have to uh, have the proper credentials and, and the stamps on the drawings and such. It's the same process happening in this wide open area of drones. So how are we going to do that? Overall, for us pilots and for drones, as soon as you get your part 107, now we talk about waivers. That process, we all know it's, it's a real, I mean, maybe not even 100 waivers went out yet in, on, online at the FAA.com, but that's really the, the axis of you getting farther in this industry because you're able to fly in the airspace. Because the basic 107 is class G airspace, and that is maybe not interesting for certainly downtown areas or near an airport or yes. other places that are complicated. So what you're suggesting is the waiver is the, is going to be the, 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 the permit, the, the, the key that unlocks the real utility here. Yes. And if I can suggest that, it's an interesting comment you make because uh, uh, I hadn't thought of it in that regard, but you're thinking from a business perspective. I was thinking at it from a process perspective, as an engineer would. Mm -hmm. nice. He caught us, right? He's thinking at it from a business perspective. That's why but I got him. <laughs> we have, uh, Hawaii has the, is part of the Pan Pacific uh, Unmanned Air Systems Test and Research Complex, PPUTRC, Oregon, Hawaii, and uh, Alaska, That's under Alaska. Yeah. And we're supposed to come up with tasks that challenge the rules, go beyond the rules today. And this issue of operating in a wavered airspace, only without a waiver, finding what is necessary to not need a waiver in there by the technology. It could be a sea and a void, it could be some other form of, uh, of higher re reliability or higher safety. Mm -hmm. If we can figure out what that is that, that would allow operation in a more, a more congested airspace, that would be something that PPUTC, UTRC could take on as a development function and then that would help the whole industry move forward. That's exactly what we're supposed to do in this PPUTRC setup. So you can, this is a great example, I hadn't thought about that, but. So we need to come at this thing more and more from a business perspective and figure <laughs> out what actually is gonna take to make this entire business work and turn that into standard practices and turn that into engineering tasks that yes. then open up the yes. door to the next step. Absolutely. So back to the film office. Um, uh, if you were thinking about uh, doing some work in a in a state park around here. You would, uh, but there's, I think here we see the film office. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about what you, what you would do. Open up the film office website. Uh, yeah, you go website. open up the film office website and you go to permit procedures. 
and that's where you would... Um, Permits and procedures on the film office that'll lead you through? Yes. Is there a section in there on drones, or is that something that we have to have, have, have help, help them develop? Um, as far as sections on the drones, it's, it's you, you have to, everybody, whoever gets a permit needs to provide insurance. That's the main thing that Donnie was explaining to me in person. She was like, insurance is so important. And, and they explain in, on, online what needs to be covered and how do you... Um, okay, so you start from, a, once again, a business perspective, insurance. What's, what's the number one that comes to your mind in business is, is insurance and business continuity. Yes. You know, have you, thought, have you explored insurance for Macaulay yet or have you already got it in place? We, right now, that's actually a good question now. So, um, right now, we're, we just started a um, campaign for raising money. We, we are trying to obtain it. Um, it's, it's pretty expensive because drones are so ex, uh, new that when it comes to coverage, state of Hawaii requires two million per occurrence. And that alone, we have, we have a provider. And what they do at the film office too is they, they can provide you insurance brokers and they'll, they'll guide you along the lines. It's majority of them are outside and it would be a, open up a great opportunity for a business in Hawaii who provides insurance mm. to take a look into covering drones is something that it, it, it would. Interesting enough, I, I have some contacts in that world of, of drone insurance and uh, some organizations uh, realize how, how low the risk is. They're not talking about manned helicopter, they're talking about something that has very little consequence and right. catastrophic aspect. And uh, the insurance, it, w working with those guys is fairly reasonable, like a thousand bucks a year or something like that, not really a, a, a game breaker. Anyway, uh, uh, that, that's, you, you've really opened my eyes to the fact that we've got to stand back and look at this thing from a business perspective. And I bet there's a lot more than just the film office and yes. just DNLR and just insurance in here. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, uh, there's probably reporting, there's presenting yourself, there's yes. uh, in some way, uh, uh, these standard best practices and things that we haven't even put together yet. Yes. So we'll expect a return visit to this very table here and talk about those things as they develop yeah. under the leadership of Kolea Gold LLC. Absolutely, we look okay. forward to bringing students. Students, yeah. next time students, okay? Bring some, yeah, All right. bring some kids over here who's interested in drones. Okay, let's, I think we can do a workshop right here at the table. That would be right? awesome. All right, let's think about that. I need to have you meet Brendan Brendan. Uh, yes. down at the Capitol, if you haven't met Brendan yet. He's leading in some, some areas of disruptive education, thinking of this as this level of education and this type, drones bring to mind all this uh, interdisciplinary interaction, which schools gen generally don't, aren't set up for. So he's trying to disrupt and go into that direction and think of that as the way that kids need to be prepared for the future. And so that's what we can do right here with you guys. So thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. I know, us. thanks again. And Michael, Mom, it's a, the half, half hour goes by real fast. Yes, but uh, a lot of important things to talk about. We'll see you guys again. Two more. And we'll see you all uh, next Friday.